Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Body Wise Podcast. I am my host, Christina Kerb, and I'm really excited today because we're doing something a little bit different than we normally do. I'm ha- This is a success story. Um, I have Catherine Gaffney joining us, and she is a follower. She is someone who is in my clean keto kind of group on Facebook. And I just asked my people, I'm like, hey, does anyone want to share their story with menopause? Because we can have lots of experts and doctors on here talking, but sometimes it's just nice to hear from someone who's been through it. So I'm really excited for this episode. Um, And as always, please make sure to subscribe and leave a review. Um, And if you want links to anything that we talk about, there's always in the show notes, and you can always get more information on thecastawaykitchen.com. All right, on to the episode. Awesome. Catherine, thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited to share your story with everybody. Um, So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm Catherine Gaffney. I'm 60 years old. I've been postmenopausal for several years, and it seemed like it took forever to go through menopause. Um, Overall, I always led an active, healthy lifestyle. I've always been studied health, nutrition. Um, I do garden from scratch. Uh, I don't eat a lot of processed foods. I love the outdoors. I do garden. I live in Florida full time and Alexandria, Virginia part time. And uh, happened for me, lives near the beach. So feel sorry for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like you do all the right things. And I love that um, you split your time between Alexandria and Florida, which is like what I do now. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, wishing I was near the beach right now. It's one of those scorching Alexandria summer days. And wow. there's just like no reprieve. <laughs> Well, it's the three o'clock thunderstorm hour right about now. So it's just getting dark out. But <laughs> nice. nice. But it was really lovely this morning. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, you know, you've lived this healthy lifestyle. It seems like you did all the right things. How did you start feeling like when you had that onset of some symptoms, like when you started going through menopause, um, how did it feel? Did it hit you like a, like a freight train or was it kind of subtle? Absolutely like a freight train. It's like overnight someone flipped a switch and boom, 20 pounds. And it really was seemingly overnight, seemingly overnight, um, probably wasn't, but (laughs) it mostly was. I did have years of night sweats and I guess perimenopause, some symptoms, but overall, once the menopause hit, it was, it was like that. Um, And it, it just started literally with the weight gain, a little bit of brain fog that got worse. that still gets worse. (laughs) That one's still an issue. Um, But feeling achy, feeling weak, I thought, you know, I just kind of lost muscle mass. And I, I I did go on HRT for a while. I took, um, um, I forgot what it was called, but I did take some sort of estrogen progesterone Mm -hmm. type pill for a while. And, and it did help at first ease the hot flashes. It did help with sleep when the first few years really going through menopause. And then you get to an age where a lot of doctors don't want you on mm. a lot of hormones. And I got really scared to go off them. So oh my God, I wonder what's going to happen when I have no supplements. Right. Um, and I went off them. And the year I went off them, I had a confluence of other events happening, going through my mom's end of life, which many people our age go through, um, going through some physical surgeries and um, um, just all the stuff that kind of slowed me down and um, caused other stress, worry, took my attention, uh, more stress eating. Because even when I've gained weight, I've still always been a healthy eater. You can gain weight on a healthy diet. I know it sucks. <laughs> um, so going off the hormones on top of major stress, you know, I had severe adrenal fatigue. So I don't know if it's all like all these things come together with menopause adds to it, or these add to the menopause symptoms. Right. Yeah. It all kind of goes hand in hand. Right. Right. So did your, when you, you mentioned you got on HRT, which for people who don't know, it's hormone replacement therapy or pretty early on, was your doctor, like when you went to your doctor with these symptoms, were they like responsive to you? Were they like on top of it? Or did you have to kind of fight to get the care that you needed? At the time they were good about it. Okay. Um, But as I got older, because when you're in your early fifties, they're okay with them. When you get closer to 60 or they, or you're five years postmenopausal, 
a lot of them don't want to give you anything. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I did go to a functional medicine doctor um, in Miami a few years ago, and she had me on a, a bioidentical cream that goes on your arm. Mm-hmm. And that was just, I think it was just estrogen. I don't know. It may, may have had some progesterone in it too. I'm not sure. Okay. But it gets slowly absorbed. And I guess, and that, and that did help some. Because okay. I was also getting worried as we age, we were about wrinkles and our skin getting yeah. saggy. So along with all the other real things like not sleeping well, you start to worry about the vanity things. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's interesting because I mean, really it's that, it's the, the way that hormones lower that have such an impact on all of these things, on our mood, on our skin, on our muscle mm-hmm. mass, on our metabolism. Um, and Laura, who's not, couldn't join us today, my sister is the expert in terms of like, when to supplement with what, because that's, you know, really, and I think that again, we're big proponents for hormone replacement therapy. I know in the holistic world, people think like, oh, well, no, like you, we need it. <laughs> like yeah. we live in this world where again, the, the, what it's expected of women. And like you mentioned, all these other stressors happen that our bodies can't do it alone. And so, yeah. you know, having that like prescription estrogen and progesterone, and it's important to have both Mm-hmm. Um, for a while, but then it's like, I know you need like progesterone and, but then after a while, I think you only need estrogen or only progesterone. It's one or the it's other only estrogen now, right? It's only estrogen later on. Cause now I am using a, um, a vaginal cream. That's just estrogen and it's okay. a low dose okay. to help things down there, which right. yeah, that's yeah. another thing. I know it's so, so again, throughout the, the, the season where we that's have a in the background. Support. Oh, don't worry. Bruce jumped in here. He's on here somewhere. He came in. When Justin opened the door, Bruce ran in. Um, so it's one of those things that, you know, again, it's not a failure to get that help. I think it's really necessary for women to know. And if your doctor is not offering it, like ask or find a doctor who's going to offer yeah. that because it does make a big difference. Right. Yeah. And that's where I found, I, I did, decide I have to go to a functional medicine because I also like the whole the whole approach. Right. And a lot going on with feeling the you know adrenal fatigue, stress, the weight gain, menopause. And I, I didn't know how to handle all of it. And then I literally did wake up besides just gaining 20 pounds overnight, a couple of years later you wake up and all of a sudden the China was dried up. And, no. and was like my husband and I still have active right. sex life. And right. that was very, very um Difficult. Yeah. Very it's hard difficult. because intercourse can become painful. Your libido drops. Yeah. Um, and again, it's not something, it doesn't have to be that way. There are things to be done about it. And so, yeah, yeah. well, it's good that you've been an advocate for yourself and getting what you need. Um, I really want to, you mentioned briefly stress and, and I know that, um, you know, when you emailed me before, like, let's talk about that. Like, why is also this season of life? Like what, what are the things that women go through in their fifties? You mentioned your your mother passing away and like, imagine while all this is happening, um, you know, how do you feel like that kind of stress impacted the the change? I I think it impacted a lot simply because it did cause the adrenal fatigue, the cortisol, managing cortisol, I think is a huge thing. And I think you talk about that a lot too. It, it's, it's keeping it, and I take a lot of ashwagandha for that actually, which is very helpful. Um, but it high cortisol, well, stress will raise your cortisol. All kinds of things will raise your cortisol, raise your stress level. So it could be having a surgery, could be worrying about something. You're worrying about how am I going to have money to retire? Or am I going to you know, be able to take care of my elderly parents? Am I going to pay for my kids' college? All these things as we get older. And you think you have less stress in life, you, you actually have more. And as you're aging, so are your friends, so are your family members. So you're dealing with things happening to them. Right. And all this stress just weighs on you um, and can raise your cortisol, which can cause weight gain, cause high blood sugar. Because I eat a very low carb diet. And I was really shocked that I had high blood sugar for someone on a low carb diet, I had pretty high A1C. And, um, you know, I asked my doctor about that and they said, well, that's probably the cortisol. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you for saying that. I, I tell people that all the time. I mean, I saw it with myself. Like I was doing all sorts of intense workouts, working crazy hours, had the stress of book publishing mm-hmm. deployments. And my fasting blood sugar was like in the nineties. And then, and also my A1C wasn't like super high, but not, not, that, yeah. not low as it should be for someone mm-hmm. who eats how I eat. And it really just took making the effort of like, okay, I have to do major lifestyle shifts to manage my stress. Like 
not like just meditating, like literally reconfiguring my work life balance, my schedule, what I'm willing to take on, um, to, to get better. Right. So what were the things that you did that worked for you and to help that? Well, I'm very fortunate because I'm retired. So I have time to put the effort in, you know, someone like you, 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 you have a kid, you work, you, you know, you, yeah. you do have a lot going on. Uh, especially younger people have a lot more going on when they have the kids at home and, and jobs and all this stuff. So I really did a lot of research and I've always been somewhat healthy. I, I actually used to be a personal trainer um, and I ex teach exercise classes. Like I said, I've always eaten well, everything. Um, but I really didn't do much to manage stress. And as you age also, I don't know if it's menopause, I don't know if it's adrenal fatigue, but all of a sudden you can handle stress as little things stress you out more than they used to. Right. Um, so stress that used to not bother me really bothers me or affects me more. So I had I looked into meditation. I'm not good at sitting still and doing a mantra. I, I tried it. I, I went to a couple <laughs> meditation weekends and just it was uncomfortable for me. I just couldn't do it. But there are other active forms of meditation. Um, walking, singing actually is meditative drawing, painting, doing something creative, music, um, even mm -hmm. cooking can be. If it's something that takes your mind off everything else and you're just concentrating on the one thing, you're not thinking about all the other stressors and it does clear your mind in a way that you're not thinking about the other stuff. Right, right. Um, yeah, that's important. That's awesome. I like that. I'm the same way. I'm an active meditator. I have a really hard time sitting. I'll do short ones. I can maybe last 10 minutes in like a silent meditation. And then I'm like, okay. But I think that that is great to do something that again, like painting, drawing, I like all those options as well. And they're very doable. They're attainable. Like anyone can do those things where sometimes when people are like, oh, you know, you have to meditate or do yoga classes. Some people are just going to be like, no, it's not going to happen. You know? <laughs> Um, I do like yoga. That being said, yoga is very helpful also. Yeah. I mean, there, and there's super forms of yoga because there's a lot of yoga that scares people that just um, either overly powerful or very difficult. Right. And there's a lot of more gentler yin yogas um, that really are more stretching and breathing and breath work. Right. And when someone's guiding me through it uh, and, and I'm moving and not just sitting still, yeah. <laughs> also laying in Shavasana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So since you were a personal trainer, I want to ask you a question because I know that, um, you know, the importance of retaining muscle mass as we age. Right. And it's such a like double-edged sword because, you know, you need protein to retain muscle mass, but your stomach, I know stomach acid tends to deplete as well as we age. So then it's like, you, it's harder to, I, and I also just speak to people who, and as they age, just don't feel like eating that much meat or feel like if they eat too much meat, they don't digest it well. Um, so what has, have you found works for you in terms of keeping your protein levels up and retaining muscle mass or okay, that's know. a real, that's a really good question. Very good question. Because I actually, I do eat a lot of protein. Okay. Um, I eat a predominantly very low carb to keto diet, right. you know, just kind of waffle and, 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 um, I do take the super enzymes, the mm -hmm. digestive enzymes, which help. Um, I happen to like protein. I don't have a problem eating too awesome. much protein. There yeah. are days where sometimes I don't feel like eggs or I don't know. Sometimes I love eggs and sometimes I don't. Oh, I say they can gross me out sometimes after like a few days. You're like, Whoa. But, but yeah. today I had a really great workout. So my first meal of the day, which is lunch, um, I had you know, leftover steak and, and that's it. I didn't have any vegetables with it or anything. Just, okay. um, so I eat a lot of just meat. Do you track, do you know how, about how many grams of protein you aim for? Do you have a target? I should, I don't track exactly. Okay. Just wondering. I know because people might ask, but I get you. I don't always track either. I think it's annoying. Um, I know for, like, for me right now, I, I aim for like 120, 250 grams of protein a day, but that's a lot. I mean, and I'm 36 and I would lift heavy weights several times a week, but um, I know when people are like, oh, I get like 50 grams of protein a day. I'm like, oh, that's not enough for what, like for women think that that's enough. And I don't think so. Okay, I, I'm more on the end you are. I, I do eat a lot of protein. Right. Um, and I, I have no problems eating it. Awesome. Um, I, I found, I did lose a lot of muscle mass. This is what shocked me the most with menopause is I was very strong. Yeah. All up until about menopause. And I really lost a lot of muscle mass. Um, um, and I, I did lose some weight. Uh, 
after you know lost kind of the menopause weight gain and then the, the COVID weight gain. Um, but last year, right before COVID, uh, I went to visit my six-month-old um, little uh, grandniece. Oh, baby. Oh. And she, so how, how much does a six-month-old weigh? I don't know, 15 pounds, 10 pounds? I don't know, something like that. Well, they can be pretty pounds. big. I don't know. <laughs> Jack, was, Jack was like a 25, oh. 20, he was 10 pounds at birth. I thought he was six oh. months old. He was She's like 20. Little. She was probably only maybe 15 pounds <laughs> okay, at this okay. point. And I had a hard time holding her for long periods of time. I had a hard time putting my luggage in the overhead compartment of the plane and thinking, how can I lift this stuff? How right. can I not carry the baby? Well, I got back into heavy weight lifting and I started that as soon as I got vaccinated. So in March, I started heavy, I do like the five by fives yeah. um, Those and, are and other forms of progressive weight training. And so I saw her in May of this year, now she's like 20 months. She's around 25 pounds. I could lift her. I could throw her. I could get squat down on the ground to pick her up and, and, and stuff that, you know, a year ago, I really thought I would not gain the muscle. I had accepted that menopause and lack of hormones is like just lost all strength. Wow. Like you can get it back. You can get it back. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. That's so that's amazing. I think, and again, heavy lifting. I think a lot of women tend to be scared of like, like you mentioned, I love that. Like you don't have to do a million reps. Literally I do that. I do either five by fives or I do where I'm like, you know, uh, five, four, three, two, one. And I go to my max to my PR. And again, it's not that many reps, but I'm doing this heavy as I can. And that's yeah. really where you see these big gains in strength. You know, it's amazing because I, I used to do a lot of weightlifting and back in the eighties and nineties when you were a child or not yet born, um, doing all the, the reading muscle fitness max, we kind of doing old school weightlifting. Yeah. And, uh, so I thought this is what I have to kind of go back to. My body liked it. Right. You know, my, my husband, he's a cardio guy. Right. He doesn't need to lift weights. He doesn't gain a pound. He can eat all the carbs he wants. Um, so, you know, everyone's a little different. Right. I've, I've got to keep the, the weight train. Plus it makes me feel so much better. I mean, I have so much more energy. I, I did start the five by fives back in March. Um, I have some definition I never thought I could get back. I've got strength, you know, that's amazing for me. Um, so I figured, you know, in another year after I've been doing it 12 months, I should be like, yeah, there, there's some woman who's 84 years old. Who's this bodybuilder. Yes. So, so, I, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And, yeah. And, and that kind of motivated. It's like, okay, it's possible. It's right. possible. Absolutely. I, I think it is. I mean, I have an aunt who is, um, yeah, she's either 60 or a little bit over 60. She's my mom because my mom's turning 59 in the, yeah. actually at the end of the month. And so my mom is the youngest of her sisters. So my aunt is in her probably like mid to early sixties. And she started CrossFit like in the last few years in the, like just in the last wow. five years started. Cause her son is like a big fitness guy, my cousin. And she's crushing it. She's like in some of the best, she's so strong. Like she's doing things she never thought she would do. And she really inspired me that like, I come from a family that doesn't have that like background and like working out. I think because, you know, they're Cuban, they came from Cuba. Like they lived in, you know, communist country. Like they didn't have gyms. They didn't have time to work out. They were hungry, you know? Um, But the fact that like, she took this up and is like, you know, sticking to it and just what she's accomplished. um, I found so inspiring. And you know, for me that I learned to work out in my, in my, in the last six years, this wasn't something I brought from my childhood. Like I had to, this was new to me, but I'm so inspired to keep going from her, from stories like her and from you, because I know that that is what is going to be like the strength training and how retaining muscle and being able to build muscle is it helps your metabolism. I mean, it's going to help with your blood sugar regulation. It's everything. I mean, yeah, everything. It helps with everything. And somehow, I don't know if it's, um, uh, creating growth hormones. I, I, I've got to look into that. Right. Uh, just building the muscles is, I don't know if it's stimulating some growth hormones, but I feel like I haven't felt in years just since I've started the heavy weight training. That's awesome. Yeah. There yeah. is a, there is a mechanism there where like you get into like when you are in like a, in an anabolic state where you do, there is right growth hormone. Like it, it goes up. I don't remember <laughs> exactly how it works now. It's like in the back of my brain somewhere. Um, that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. So I want to talk about sleep. I know you mentioned that that's something that sometimes you still struggle with, but that's a huge struggle for a lot of people who they go through menopause. So what hasn't worked for you and what's helped you? The things that help 
are the consistent bedtime mm. and a consistent wake up time seven days a week. But a lot of people end up, you know, they get up early all week long and on the weekends they sleep in. So they have jet lag every single week. They give right. themselves jet lag. So the consistency with that, staying hydrated, trying to eat the same time also, uh, mm. time frame before you go to bed. Um, limiting alcohol, but I'm not always so good about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, 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 keeping the room as cool as possible. Yeah, that's my a husband one. will have more covers on his side of the bed than I <laughs> yeah. do. I've got a fan on my side of the bed, blowing okay. air on me. Um, okay. That helps. And I do take some, you know, I do take melatonin, valerian root. I do take some CBD. Okay. Um, and, and as I read different things, sometimes I'll try something different and back off on something else, depending on if my sleep will be consistent for a while, then maybe it changes. And it's like, okay, time to mix things up a little bit, right. change them up a bit okay. of what I might be trying to take. Awesome. Um, what do you mentioned? Um, I know you mentioned earlier, um, like you eat lunch with your first meal, and then you just mentioned like eating dinner at the same time. So what are your like ideal meal time, like meal timing? What's your ideal like for you? Okay, well, I do eat dinner too late, but dinner's usually closer to eight. And we keep trying to push it back closer to seven, but <laughs> that's our, but we are consistent every day when we do eat it. Um, my lunch, I try to make it between noon and two. I try to push it later if I can, if I have a heavier weight day mm -hmm. and, you know, if I'm hungrier, then I'll eat at noon. Um, if I'm not that hungry, then I'll, I push it off until about okay. two. Okay. And it's always usually me during the, my, my lunch is more of a, um, almost more carnivore, you know, and right. then generous meat with some veggies. Okay. Okay. Awesome. What are your like top five foods that you, that you eat, that you feel like are what I call feel good foods, you know, that are like the ones that make you feel real good and, you know, nourish you, energize you. What are your top five? Like that you just feel like they're your superfoods. That are my super, okay. That my superfoods, not my cheat foods. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Feel good foods are, are like the ones that are good for you. Cheap foods, what I call, and I know I use, I use the term worth it foods, which are like, eh, they're not bad for you. They're not great for you, but they're worth it sometimes, you know, but um, feel good foods are like, you know, I feel like for me, it's always going to, it's going to be like ground beef, avocado, you know, citrus, cilantro, you know, those kind of okay. things. So what are your feel good foods? Well, um, one thing I cook with every night, so I, I don't have a nightshade issue, which so I'm lucky. Um, <laughs> I, I cook with onion, mushrooms, and peppers every night. Every vegetable I make starts kind of with that awesome. root. Um, I do love beef of all kinds. I don't eat beef every day. We eat a lot of chicken, eat fish a couple times a week. But my, I'm also a cheese eater. And nice. cheese is sort of a feel-good food, but I try not to do way too much of it. But I, I, I love cheese. Avocado is great, though, actually. Um, I buy it though. I have to buy it in the little things that you peel open. Yeah. Whole foods. I mean, Costco has a little like holy guacamole, like little hundred yes. calorie that's packs. That's Those are good. great. Those are awesome. Yeah, Cause they don't go bad. Like, if you right. buy an avocado and you, you know, eat it with the right 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that's awesome. And then is there anything you eat? Like in terms of, do you like, do you deal with like sweet cravings, carb cravings? Like what do you, do you ever do carb ups? Like do you, so, some people tend to do carb ups or, or, you know, do I, I don't, I don't have a sweet tooth, uh, fortunately, awesome. don't hate me for that, but I don't, <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> I've always had the salty tooth. So my big thing when I gain weight, I stress eat is I eat too many nuts. Mm -hmm. I could eat the whole jar of nuts or the whole bag of nuts in one sitting of any kind of nuts. Okay. Um, so, you know, yes, they're the good fats and yes, they have some good things for you, but yes, when you eat 3000 calories at a time, that sounds so good. <laughs> Um, that and also maybe cheese um, gotcha. over, okay. do, overdoing the cheese. But. That reminds me of uh, Kendra, uh, peace, love, and low carb because she's we're really good friends and she's she's a salty tooth. So she's I'm I have a sweet tooth hands down and she's a salty person. So whenever we hang out, she laughs at my like dark chocolate habit, you know. But then she's got like the salty snack habit, and so it's funny. Everyone yeah, I'm definitely the salty. Yeah, I follow her too. So she's she is all when we're doing salty thing. I um. One thing I, I get at Trader Joe's, it's called Montezuma's. It's a chocolate bar. Mm. It's 100% dark chocolate. Yeah. It has no sugar in it. And to me, 
and I eat one little square after dinner. Um, to me, that's sweet. So if I eat something that's 90% dark, it's sickeningly sweet to me. <laughs> nice. Well, that's yeah. good. That's good to have your palate there. That's awesome. So you don't use like sugar alcohols or sweeteners. Mm-mm. Awesome. No, awesome. I don't. That's good though. That's, I mean, I use them sometimes because it's, again, I have a sweet tooth, but I always know that I'm like, these aren't great for me. <laughs> like, I mean, there's a data out there that shows that they can have negative impacts depending on gut health. And, you know, there's the whole, like Ali Miller talks about this in terms of like, it tell it still lights off in your brain, like the dopamine response and all that yeah. jazz. Um, but if you, you know, I think for people, it does help them if it can help them lead a lower carb lifestyle and lower right. food, it can help ease into it or help right. them maintain. So I right. think it, it's helpful yeah. for some people. For um, sure. you said you also touched on gut health, which is besides, you know, stress, gut health is huge in everything, whether you're postmenopausal or a young person like you, um, and getting the gut health in check really helped me tremendously. And that took me a long time. That took me, I don't know, six months to a year. Um, I know the gut doesn't change overnight. It's a big one, but yeah, if you're not guts in jeopardy, you're not going to be converting hormones and it even impacts your thyroid and impacts your immune system. It can cause inflammation. It's just it's a lot. It'll, it'll impact. I mean, even weight gain, like sometimes when people feel like more and more evidence is accumulating that, you know, weight gain, isn't just a matter of like calorie deficits or calorie surplus that there's this, I mean, gut health and inflammation play a huge role yes. um, in our, in how our body uses energy. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I take probiotics now. Um, I did, I was doing I think it's either L glutamine or glutamine powder. Yeah, L glutamine. Yeah. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. It helps the gut lining for sure. Yeah. Awesome. That and collagen and all that stuff and um, you know, doing the enzymes and okay. uh, you know eating properly. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier that um, you know you had that initial like kind of menopause weight gain and then you got that off and then kind of COVID again like hit and you like I think I mean who did not gain weight last year I don't know who did it like every I did everyone I feel like it just it, it was, only my husband didn't gain weight right yeah exactly <laughs> only the men the men did it anyway but um. What no, has I worked think, for you? Because I know that a lot of women either get stuck with that menopause weight gain or gain weight later on and then feel like, well, nothing works. What used to work doesn't work anymore. So, I mean, again, I know you've always been a very fit person and healthy, but what worked for you? Well, so that's what, first of all, I was kind of shocked that I had put on about 20 pounds during the year of COVID. Yeah. Uh, the year of, <laughs> I mean, I know it was stress. You know, cortisol was up. I was on Facebook too much, you know, oh, yeah. politics, politics and everything. all this stuff. Yeah. And, you know, watching the news every day just was too, it was too much for me, but I couldn't stop. I mean, I could not stop, you know. And so I, between the cortisol and probably snacking more than I thought I was, you know, I, I think it was nuts, probably lots <laughs> of nuts. Turn <laughs> me off the kitchen, I ain't pulled nuts, okay. Um, the weight came on. And so when I finally got vaccinated, um, so in Florida, our gym has been open for a long time, but I really wasn't ready to go take classes or, or work out there. Um, and especially because a lot of people in Florida weren't taking it all very seriously. I know but, I was, I was there last summer. It was, it was, it was terrifying. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so I stayed put and that was most of the time. And it's funny, as much as I know how to exercise, um, Oh yeah. So you I don't do it at home. home. And I could, you know, even, no. did I do it at home? No. no, me neither. I had all the plans in the world and I did a few backyard exercises, but it was like, the, my yeah. cons- it's just the intensity and consistency is just not there. And I think again, it was a lot of the fatigue involved with like the COVID fatigue that, yeah. cause yes, we were home and we weren't doing much, but we were still processing a lot. And I, I felt the same way. I mean, I hear you. We didn't know what's going on with the world when this would end, if we'd get sick and die, you know, we just, it was very right. scary for everybody. The whole world was traumatized really. Right. Um, and I just, you know, once I did get vaccinated, I thought, okay, I feel comfortable going back into the gym. And at that point, still, you had to be masked at least to walk around. Um, and I thought, I've got to do what worked for me in the past. What worked for me in the past? Weightlifting. And it's like I've got to go back to that. In the last few years or last probably eight years, I've really been more of a cyclist and a swimmer and doing mm-hmm. some yoga. So I've done exercise, but 
I really lost a lot of muscle last week, so I wasn't doing the strength. Right. So I'm just going to do, and I'm going to go back to what I did in the beginning of 2019 when I started to lose my menopause weight. Like, go back to eat, you know, keto, uh, taking the supplements, being consistent, and and that's really the key. Really, consistency is key with both eating and with the workouts. Mm-hmm. And I, if I have to give up you know, say a day of swimming or something else, I do not give up my weight workout. My, mm-hmm. my weights now take priority. Whereas before I felt like, oh, I have to do all this cardio. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't feel that, you know, I'll do enough cardio to for heart health now, but I really feel like the weight training is for both physical health and even mentally. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So weight training, you know, again, your clean diet, which you mentioned, it's clean keto and you don't do, you know, sweeteners. Um, and you prioritize protein and sleep and stress management. I mean, again, it's like, yeah, these things are like what everyone says to do, but not a lot of people put them all together, but it's been really incredible how you prioritize doing that. And again, and reap the benefits and seeing the results. And I think it's really awesome to be like, look, the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> you know, I, I do feel good about it because it, it, it works when you put your mind to something and you have to commit to doing it. Right. And I think a lot of people want a quick fix. Right. They want a quick fix. It's I want to just take a drug that'll make me feel better in two weeks, or I try to diet for a week and it didn't work. Would you weeks not long enough for a lifestyle? Right. <laughs> it's not. Um, or if yeah, I exercise for three weeks and that didn't work. Well, you have you have to keep it up. But you have to find what works for you too. And everybody is different right. with what works for their body, whether it's you know, as you know, with autoimmune, everyone has different triggers for, for what. Uh, foods and have to figure out on their own what that is. And I even think physically type of workouts were all built differently and genetically different that what works for me, and you know, you like weight training, I like weight training, might not work for somebody else or they might. Right. I think some kind of resistance training. And I think I've talked about that before. Like I really like heavy lifting. Some people do with even yoga. Yoga is a form of resistance training. If you know the body weight, Pilates, it can be a, a, a more relaxed form. Um, mm-hmm. Some people like hit exercises and yeah. I pretend to like them, but I don't, my body, like my body, my body crashes. Like I like the, I like the endorphin rush I get, but my, it does like kind of flare my autoimmune stuff sometimes. So I have to be really careful with it. Yeah. I, I tend to feel like it, it does raise my cortisol too much. Mm-hmm. And when I very first went to the functional medicine doctor in 20, end of 2018, um, she told me, cause I was swimming like an hour and a half, uh, three or four days a week. And she said, only swim for 45 minutes. And in the first month, I, I decided I'm going to trust the doctor working out. Like, cause I thought I have to work out my stress. I have to, I'm under so much stress. My mom was sick. Oh, I have to swim to get, get all this up. Well, I thought I'm going to trust her. I cut back to about 45 minutes and only doing that. I didn't really make many other changes. I lost like seven pounds the first month, just from the cortisol for working out too hard. Yes. Somehow. Yes. And, and, and that gave me the motivation. It's like, okay, this is really interesting. This, this works. There's something to, you know, the time is also working on adrenal fatigue and the gut health. And so I just knew this is going to be a long process for me, but I accept it and I'm going to do it. Right. But I, I do have time. I have, you know, I don't have a job to be at in the early morning. So right, I, right. I'm lucky. I'm very fortunate that way. Um, yeah. And that's something else I do is, you know, I do gratitude. Uh, you have to be grateful for things every day and look at the positive things mm-hmm. along with even when there's negative stuff, right? I think positive right. things you're right. grateful for as yeah. well. So important. Absolutely. And I, I think that it goes back to, you know, you have the time and you're grateful for, it and that's amazing. But some people, and I, and I've, I've worked with my, my coaching group where it was like, you have to make the time, like the people yes. who don't see results are the ones who are going to continue to like, you know, you, you have a job you hate that has horrible hours or you, you, you just, you're, you're at the office till 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, who else is at the office? Is Sam at the office? No. Is Sam fired? No. Then you don't have to be at the office till 10 o'clock either. Like you have to understand these boundaries with work, with your family. That's the point you know, so you can make choices that are going to benefit you, whether it's like committing to like, I'm taking that time for myself to meditate or to work out or to do that thing, to prepare meals that are going to be good for you. And I know it can be hard. Like, so it can be seemingly impossible, but it, everything is choices, right? Cause when you think yeah. about, um, the choice to, you know, watch two hours of Netflix in, in the evening, which believe me, sometimes you just really just what you want to do, but, um, you know, 
again, it's, it's about, I think women have a hard time putting themselves first. Like you can tell tell your adult children to make themselves lunch. So you can go take care of yourself. Like if you have teenagers (laughs) at home that you feel like you're still caring after tell those bums to make themselves a sandwich because mommy has (laughs) things to do. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And when I was, you know, when I was your age and I was working, I used to travel almost hundred percent of the time for my job. And I did work like 12 hour days, Right. but I got up in the morning and uh, I worked with guys who were bodybuilders or weightlifters. That's kind of how I got into it. And I just get up and go to the gym with them and learn how to lift weights Yeah. back in the eighties and the nineties. And um, so we'd get our workout in and then be able to work all day. And all we did was, you know, just sitting down on the computer. So you're, at least I got my workouts in, Right. but I was doing it. Um, but it is consistent and, and, and I always felt better when you work out regularly, but there's, there's all kinds of stuff out there. There's 10 minute workouts people can do, right. you know, five, 10 minute little stretching sessions in the middle of their work day, taking a walk at lunchtime. Walk. Yeah. Um, walking, walking is huge. Take the kids go for, for a walk. I mean, if you have the kids, I mean, if you're able to like, if you, I just, again, any little step you can do to get your body moving is, and to manage stress and just again, to prioritize your health because like you mentioned earlier, it, women, especially who are going through menopause, they're in that age where they're taking, they still have like, if they have children, they have adult, people think like adult children are like, take care of themselves. Yeah, right. Super needy, yeah. super needy, <laughs> like, you know, graduating college or getting married or whatever. And like, they're totally like stressing their parents out. Then again, taking care of adult, of, of old, of elderly parents. Um, I remember, you know, when my mom, when we went through that, when my grandparents passed and it was very recently and it's very hard on everybody. Um, but especially that, you know, their children, um, yeah. And, and there's so much going on and I see women in just giving, pouring from an empty cup over and over and over. And then they end up with fatigue and waking and depression and, you know, they're no libido and they feel like they don't, they feel like strangers to themselves. So thank you for being yeah, you really, you do. And, it, and that does make you depressed when all those things happen. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm just old now. I'm wrinkled. I'm I don't have a sex drive. I'm, I have so much stress and I have all these worries because right. the, the people in my age range, your, your parents, your mom's age range, it, it, I think they call it the sandwich generation because we still have our elderly parents right. and, and then you and then the grandchildren, right? Yeah. You're, you know, yeah. you parents, your mom not only worries about you, she's worrying, you know. Right. My son, my nieces, my, my, and there's three of us plus the grandkids. Are you kidding me? Like it's impossible to get my, my mom, she owns a bit, she has a, her restaurant. So she's still working. And it's so hard because I do see that, you know, the stress was so there's a lot going on and it's always like, mom, you can't outrun the stress that you're under. And again, she struggles too, but in the, in the times which she's not doing right now, but there have been periods where I've seen her prioritize herself where she tells her employees, like, I'm coming in an hour late. Cause I'm going to the gym in the mornings and, you know, and she'll stick to doing like, you know, more AIP or lower carb. And it's incredible to change. I mean, she sees it, she sees it. It's she struggles with the consistency, but again, I think that it's, you're a great testament to that. That consistency really pays off because I feel like I struggle when I see my mom. So be like, she'll, she'll do these things where she just, she's like, I'm just the old grandma now. And I'm like, mom, chill out. Like, you know, she tries to like, just, I don't know, fall into this, like, I'm okay with being the like little old lady role. And I'm like, you're not an old lady. First of all, I'm like, you're a super young mom to have a 36 and a 37 year old. And I'm like, and she, it's not her. She still has so much, you know, life to give and, and, and everything else. Plus her husband, my stepdad is 10 years younger. So he's 49, you know? Wow. Yeah. It was, he was 20, <laughs> he was 28. She was 30 when they got married. And, and, and again, it's, it's so much about like, I know that when she feels that way, it's not that she believes it. It's just that she's kind of feeling defeated. Um, yeah. And I don't want her to feel that way. And I don't want anyone, any woman ever to feel defeated and to feel like you can't be sexy and have a sex life and have strength and energy in your sixties and seventies. Yeah. And, and it's, it's completely possible. See, I want to fight aging. So I'll be, oh, I want to accept it. Well, okay. I don't mind that I'm 68. I don't need to lie about my age. Um, and I don't have gray hair yet. But Lucky, when I, I do, know. I probably will dye it. <laughs> I will, I will not, you know, maybe if I'm 80, I'll let the gray come through. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but I want to look good for my age. I want to look healthy, but I want to feel good for my age. I want to feel good. 
you know, more, more than looking good, I want to feel good. And that's what um, the low carb, the intermittent fasting and, and, and the weight training consistent exercise does for me. And I think everybody, you're right. I mean, we're talking about your people don't put themselves first and we have right. so many much going on. And I find that when there is something, I don't have a bunch of relatives coming to town, I tend to you know, I get a little more stressed out or I don't have time for everything to do it as, as well or consistently as I would like. But then, then you jump back on the bandwagon when you slack off. You, you take a vacation, you have, you know, um, if you don't get all the workouts in, but uh, yeah. practice, by, especially with the five by fives, they're actually not that long. So I can do, you know, the weight training is like three days a week, um, about an hour each time. And then I always do stretching afterwards or maybe I do some other exercises, but that particular part, um, and I can swim quick. and walk on the other days or do yoga on the other days. And yeah, um, it can be quick. It doesn't have to be, I think we, we get stuck in the all or nothing mentality when it's the, no, mm -hmm. something is better than nothing. So, you know, I used to get stuck into that too. If I couldn't do an hour and a half at the gym, I wasn't even going to do anything. And I'm like, no, some days I run in there. I literally just stretch do my, like my five sets and then I'm out of there. And that's all I have time for because, yep. you know, my son called me or I have to pick him up or whatever. And that yes. is still better than, than not doing anything. So, right. um, yeah, doing what you can, but I, I love that. I think that it's important to know that and at any age, at any phase, like you deserve to thrive and feel good right. and that you can, um, even, and if you have a doctor who tells you that eh, it's normal, you're just getting older, get a new doctor. <laughs> that's, that's, you're right about that. Because I've had a few just, oh, just accept that that's part of aging. I found for me, I, I do prefer as far as a gynecologist or functional medicine that it's a woman. I right. prefer an older woman who's right. going through menopause or been through it because even a younger one, yep, female doctors have even kind of brushed me off. Oh, you know. I agree. They're older. I, it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think sometimes oh, you you young doctors. Know, you know, yeah. Research, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I definitely agree. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Catherine, for sharing your story with us and your insights and, and everything. It's been, you're so inspirational and you've had, you know, so many good like pearls to share with us. And again, just your story and um, your, your passion for it is, is so wonderful. So oh, thank, thank you. you thank you. Thank you for having me. I admire you so much. Oh, thank I think you. you're really a, a good person overall. You know, it's, it's uh, amazing that you speak up for what you speak out for. So oh, thank um, you. Anyway, thank you so much. Well, it was a pleasure having you here. Um, and I, um, we'll talk soon. And okay. um, if there, for those listening, um, you know, make sure to subscribe and leave a review and um, yeah, and we'll see you guys next time on BuddyWise. Oh.